Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will talk about the in-sample versus out-of-sample analysis of trading strategies. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Vojtko and I'm CEO and Head of Research in Quantpedia. Today we will not speak just about one trading strategy, but we will discuss a lot of them. In reality, we will speak about hundreds of strategies because we will check how strategies perform in sample versus out of sample. So we will check our statistical tests and we will see what is the decrease in the performance of strategies out of sample. Here in uh, Quantpedia we have in our database several hundreds of strategies, so over 800 of them and more than 600 of them have equity curves, so we have a lot of strategies and we have a really big uh, data sample with which we can work. There are a lot of articles about the in-sample versus out of sample analysis of trading strategies. As of a few years ago, in 2020, we published an article how do investment strategies perform after publication, so we try to find out in the research what is the performance decay in uh, trading strategies once the strategies are published. It's not so easy to arbitrage uh, excess returns for market anomalies. There are a lot of papers that are speaking about that. There is still profit that we can get after the strategies are known, after they are published, but of course there is some decrease. Most of the papers show decrease between 26 and 58 percent, so I mean something between one third and one half of the actual return uh, that was in sample. Now the question is if we can do something with that. Yeah, there are some ideas what we can do. It can be the better portfolio of the trading strategies and we can try uh, to check numerically based on statistics what is the real decay. For the real decay, we took our database of uh, trading strategies and we checked the recent papers. Uh, the recent papers are still showing decay around half in the out of sample period. What are our data and what is our methodology? So for that, uh, we can take our first ever encyclopedic entry, the asset class transforming strategy and we can show how we did our uh, calculation. So asset class transforming strategy is strategy based on a paper from Maven Faber and the backtest period from source paper starts in 1973 and ends in 2008. This is the in-sample period. Now we do not have a data from 1973, we have a data from around 2000. What we did is that we did the out-of-sample analysis or we calculated the performance of the strategy. We built the strategy in QuantConnect and our beta starts in 2000, so from 2000 at the end of 2008 is our in-sample period and from 2008 until the end of the backtest is our out-of-sample period. And we run this analysis on all of the strategies that we have in our database. Here is how it looks like, so from 2000 until the end of 2008 is an in-sample period, from 2008 until the end of the backtest is out-of-sample out of sample backtest. So what is our data sample? We have over 860 strategies. At the moment of the analysis, at the beginning of May 2023, we backtested 671 of them. Out of those, over 400 are maintained and updated on a monthly basis, so we have all of the data on a monthly basis, we can update them, etc, etc, we can measure the performance from month to month. Those are those that were included in the analysis, but out of them 62 had to be excluded because we did not have a data back uh, into the period ending from the paper, so for example if the paper ends in 2003, but our data starts in 2005, we are missing two years of the data, so we had to remove the strategy. So at the end we are left with over 355 strategies for the further analysis. Now it's really nice sample. So we are using the Scheib ratio, so that's our main core interest, so that's the ratio we are using to measure the performance. The reason for that is because it's a risk-adjusted measure, because the returns are scaled by analyzed uh, returns, so analyzed returns are scaled by early volatility. So we have risk adjusted returns. And the reason for that is because we just do not have a database that covers equities, but we cover all main asset classes like equities, bonds, commodities, and cryptors. And it would be really meaningless to draw conclusions from just the returns that are measured when our data sample contains, I mean, highly volatile crypto strategies and at the same time, uh, low volatile fixed income strategies. Mm, it is really not a good idea to just use the performance. We are using the Sharp ratio. So we are measuring what is the decrease in the Sharp ratio. Uh, what are the results? So here we have the results in a nice table. So average Sharp ratio uh, of in sample or in sample results is 1.57. So that's the average Sharp ratio on in sample period. The average out of sample Sharp ratio is 1.05. What does it mean is we have a 33% decrease in uh, out of sample period in a Sharp ratio. But that's on average. When we take a look how the distribution of Sharp ratios among the strategies look like, we can see that the better measure is the median. So what is the median? So half of the strategies have the Sharp ratio higher than the median and half of the strategies have the Sharp ratio lower than the median. 
so the median in sample Sharp ratio is 1.18 the median out of sample Sharp ratio is 0 0.66 so we have around 43 percent decrease in a sharp uh, in a sharp ratio we can say the decrease in the sharp ratio so it can be 43 percent on average or 44 percent median strategy the results are totally in line and consistent with the findings in the previously mentioned research papers in all the pa research papers that are showing what is the decrease in the performance so yeah we can expect that strategies do not perform so well out of sample compared to in sample but the sharp ratios are still very interesting and uh, when we build a portfolio out of those strategies uh, the performance is still very very nice and sharp ratios are very nice and we can even use some techniques to improve the performance of strategies in a portfolio but firstly some statistics so we can see from the distribution of the results they follow a quasi normal distribution so we can expect that the strategy will have a sharp ratio in an interval of minus one and three in both in sample and out sample results uh, of course the in sample results are even better as we mentioned before the results seem to be skewed positively so we have a fat tail on the right side that's a very interesting finding and it speaks in favor of ring and risk management so if you employ a portfolio of multiple strategies so the return distribution is positively skewed and the strategies uh, deteriorate out of sample but we still have some really strong positive outliers it makes sense to use the risk budgeting and it makes sense to cut the risk budget to strategies that do not perform well out of sample and we can let the profit runs for those that profit well and this may give some validity to the idea of factor momentum so the factor momentum is the idea that we are not using all of the strategies out of sample we are using just the one that are performing really really well so we are doing the momentum uh, strategy on top of portfolio of strategies and we can use also the trend following so using the strategies or trading only the strategies that are performing well or exceptionally well compared to some uh, history but let's move on so here is the picture showing how all included strategies behaved during the 10 year window so the last five years in sample period and the first five years of our sample period so the first thing that we can see is that uh, there is high variability in returns a lot of the strategies outperform out of sample all of the strategies are underperformed out of sample compared to in sample period so when we build the portfolio the black line that's the equally weighted average of all of the strategies that equally weighted average still performs very well the average correlation between the strategies is nearly the zero so when we build the portfolio from the strategies the velocity is very very low and the resultant portfolio has a very high uh, share ratio of course the out of sample portfolio would on average yield approximately four fifth of in sample performance when we have a portfolio of strategies so uh, yeah there is uh, individual performance decay among the strategies but the portfolio decay is significantly lower so what is the conclusion of course sharp ratios worsen uh, during the lifetime after forming trading strategies known beforehand on uh, known market anomalies but according to our analysis, it is reasonable to expect sharp ratio degradation by one third or one half against the in-sample period. But this is not a bad result. We can embrace and we can prepare for that. We can uh, build the folio of strategies. The results are in line with the academic consensus. What we can do or what can be the partial solution to the performance decay. The factor momentum can be the right answer. The fed tail financial distributions are known to be good targets for exploiting the momentum and trend following rules. So the trend momentum overlay on the portfolio of strategies can be a good idea and then it's a surely good idea and we can use another uh, price based factor overlays like low, low volatility mean max etc we review these overlays in another series that's called the social trading multi-strategy here is the first article in this series of articles we reviewed how we can build a better multi uh, strategy portfolio so the portfolio that's built from different strategies, not just on momentum alone, but also on other measures like volatility, minimum return over some period, maximum return over some predefined period, etc., etc. I really have an advice for you if you are interested in more to read also this uh, series of articles. Thank you very much. I hope that you liked this video. We showed statistically what we can expect from strategy to perform out of sample, what is the performance and sharp ratio decay, and how to build a portfolio of multiple strategies to help have a better performance performance and also more stable portfolio so thank you very much i hope that you'll join me in the next video interested then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to quantpedia pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research